Welcome to Wales and House of Retro, a small but effective market stall, place, shop. It was kind of in this mall with very small businesses and it was very difficult to find. It was pretty cool and I was hoping to get some native voiceover, but you'll see that there were two guys that completely ruined the experience that were talking loud and I'll give you an example of what it sounded like to be in here. So, yeah, you can hear in the background and it was really, really loud. I wasn't quite sure what was going on. So you're going to get voiceover from me. But nonetheless, let's enjoy this. There was something really cool in here and you're going to actually see it um, in the very last clip of this video. It's incredibly rare and if you're a Pokemon fan, you will probably be very happy at what we find. So we got these switch cases in the middle and they were for unboxed switch games. We'll open one up later on, but for me personally, I tend not to have unboxed switch games. I thought they were really cool. There was a Pokeball design, a bootleg Game Boy design. They were priced at 12 quid and you could see that they were from Japan. I will say this, if you do go to Rexman, you do visit House of Retro, be prepared for expensive games. Um, quite expensive games actually, but I guess it depends what you want to pay. I did buy some games and you'll see them at the end of the video. I spent £99 and I was very happy with what I've got. In fact, the bulk of what I've got were Sega Saturn titles. I was just admiring the kind of cardboard box of the Tekken variant on the PS1 there that was really nice to see. I'd not seen that for quite some time. So, you know, there was quite a lot of nostalgia in here. Nothing was alphabetized, so I tend to do a little bit of a, a bit of a review when I go on my retro game hunts. Alphabetizing was not on point here. It was very difficult to hunt. So just again, be, be mindful of that when you go in and if you go in. It's not one that I'd heard of, but because we were in Wales, I was kind of Googling retro game stores in North Wales and this came up. There was another one as well, but it was way up on the North Coast and it was a bit too far to drive and their Facebook page didn't look very inspiring for want of a better phrase. Um, so we're just plowing through some Mega CD games here. You saw me pick up the Terminator. Um, that was priced at 150. Now, there'll be a short on that, so you can go and make your own mind up. I'm doing an eBay versus House of Retro short. Um, that will probably be out by the time you actually watch this. I'll pin it in the comments if you want to check that out. So I'm double checking, double checking, double checking. There's nothing that else that I wanted on the Mega CD front. You can see me fuss my dog there, Molly. It was really nice to be able to take her. She had a fabulous time in Wales. She loves the beach. We were walking up mountains. Molly had an absolute absolute blast. I will say that the chap behind the counter there with the Super Nintendo jumper on was incredibly accommodating. He was really nice to Molly as well and he was happy to get stuff out and just have a general conversation. It was just, like I say, really, really nice experience. This switch case, I need to just say right now, it was really freaking cool. And as a huge California games girl, it had to be shown. Unfortunately, I didn't need a switch case. Otherwise, I would have snapped that one up. Consoles we've got on the left hand side here, you can see some GameCube stuff, there were two SNES variants and then over in the far corner near the till we've got the predominantly handheld rarities including all your Pokemon games and the, the hidden gem that we will see right at the end of the video so you guys need to stay tuned for that. That's always somebody who, who knows oh. that they're going to do something really... Help me! <laughs> I'm literally laughing hearing the the background voices. It was very, very difficult, honestly. Um, but anyway, the Mega Drive stuff here, these are pretty cool. We had a German and a French copy of The Lion King at eight and 10 pounds respectively. And I thought, you know, it's really cool seeing soccer games. FIFA Soccer 97, a very battered case. But this next clip, we actually managed to get some uninterrupted voiceover. What else do we have, Molly? What else do we have? Any Wii games? Maybe so, we want some Wii games, Mal. What do you think? <laughs> Molly, Molly, Molly.
Now check out this little obscurity, Virtua Fighter Remix on the Sega Saturn. I was like, okay, never seen this before. And I know the box is battered and I'll spoil it here. I bought it because it was in cool. I'm gonna fix the box up with, I. Why, there's like a me this method where you can iron it out and um, then kind of glue it all back together. It's supposed to be really effective. So I'm gonna actually do that. Um, but this comes with a bonus disc of kind of images as well. And it was released in 95, a couple of months after the first release. So it's really cool and not something you see every day. And again, the box actually, I actually prefer this box to normal Sega satin cases. <laughs> And the double jewel cases are just a delight to behold. Nintendo Switch game cases looked cool, like I said, 12 quid. I just didn't bother at all. I just wanted to show them for you guys. And I wanted to know if you, there's something you would use. I guess if you were traveling and you didn't want the weight or the, I guess the luggage space for the Switch cases, these are actually pretty nice and they held up to 12 games. You do get a bit more of an angle there as to what designs they were. They are from Japan, but I bet they are so much cheaper in Japan. Um, but again, I think if I'd have got one, I'd have just had it on the shelf. You know, those kind of shelf fillers next to the, the figurines that everybody has. Yeah, that's what I would have probably have got them for, but I didn't bother. Um, so you now get an actual look at some of the uh, really cool stuff. I did say it was predominantly handheld, and it is, but there were some nice SNES games and tournament fighters there. I think that was 20-something quid, so that wasn't badly priced. That does go for a pretty penny, but anything else that you see, I did think that was a bit kind of kind of top end in terms of pricing there. So Jess did come and she did do a bit of filming as well. So shout out to Jess. She actually wanted to leave here and go off to some charity shops. So off she went while we were just having a little peruse at the this PS3 on the bottom. And I'm just having a conversation here and, and I'm, I always ask, is everything out? Is there anything in the back that you, you've kind of not got? Maybe some trades or something like that? Um, pretty sure there wasn't anything so it, it's always a tip that i would encourage you guys to do do it in charity shops although charity shops are getting less and less in terms of like what you can get and um, we're actually here looking more at the and talking more about the obscurities and the the oddness of the french and german lion kings and it's a question that i want to pose to you actually do you collect different um, you know, say like you've got the same game, would you have bought the French version of Lion King if you owned the English version? Would you have bought the German copy? Is it a, something that's a part of your collection that interests you or is it just another one of those things that you're willing to kind of toss to one side because you've got the pal English version? For me on that game, I'm not a huge fan of the game. It's a great game, don't get me wrong, as are all Disney games, but I decided to pass up on the French and German copies of Lion King. some unboxed stuff as well i liked the price tags on this it was kind of fixed on to the the top there which was really really cool in fact i saw a copy of wayne's world in with this and i thought i don't i've not seen that that often but i'll be honest with you guys here it is hey wayne's world 20 quid so it is more obscure um so let me know if you think that's a good price i'm eager to see some of your comments i don't know why i was trying to put it back in there i am just an idiot it went on the bottom Gemma. why did you not see that but I just wasn't in the market for unboxed games and typically I'll only buy unboxed Super Nintendo 
on the unbox variant. So I'm a bit, I'm a bit of a snob with my collection like that. And and this this was the kind of the knockoff Game Boy Switch case, which I love the artwork. But now we're going to see the creme de la creme in this store, and then we're going to go back to the lady lounge. Right. Um, I bet that's a pretty penny, isn't it? Yeah, we've got nine hundred on it. Oh, yeesh. 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 That is yeah. so that comes with the Oh my god, I've never seen this pack before. No, it's cool, isn't it? It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. So that was the only only way you could get that Is it really? I never knew that. Wow. I need a few seconds of your time to tell you about channel memberships. If you guys want to become a channel member, click join from the main page or the second link in the description. There are three tiers, all with different perks for you if you want to become a team member. Thanks for your time. Let's continue with the video. So House of Retro in Wrexham in North Wales was pretty good. Prices were high, customer service was bang on, and I would suggest you guys go and give them a follow on Facebook. I'll link them in the description if you're in the area. Now, I'm gonna show you guys what I picked it up, and then we're gonna end the episode, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for being here. You have a pleasant day. See you soon. Let's find out what we got. <laughs>